Today I want to bring you a quick tip because most of us that make guitars also play guitars in some form and quite often have home recording projects that we're working on. While I have a lovely dingwall bass of my own, when the strings get dirty I could buy a used car for the price of a new set. So when that happens and I'm in a hurry to get down a new riff idea I turn to virtual bass plugins like Submission Audio's June Bass 2. It seems like every other month there's a new virtual bass plugin being released to the market and they're at the stage now where they're all pretty good. So they sound great but they're not that intuitive to use especially when it comes to articulations. The problem lies in the way articulations are set up. You can go the really slow route of opening the articulations map inside contact, drawing in the appropriate articulation information under the relevant notes in your piano roll, then repeating the process until all of your articulations have been entered. Or you could do what I've traditionally done and that is stick labels on your MIDI control surfaces so that you always have a dedicated button for each articulation. The problem with that is you end up with multiple control surfaces, one for every MIDI instrument that you regularly use. Luckily there's a much more intuitive way of doing this that doesn't require you to leave your on-screen work environment, doesn't require you to open up contact at all, and it doesn't require any extra hardware. The best part is once you've gone through this process once for your chosen software instrument, you can save that as a preset and use it in all of your future tracks. Not being able to do any of this for the last couple of years while I've been using the first version of Gin Bass was driving me nuts. So let's dive in and I'll show you how to set up articulations mapping in your own Logic Pro session. Here I am opening up the piano roll in Logic Pro and you can see my bass MIDI information all laid out there as well as note velocity and pitch bend boom there information now if i close the piano roll you can see in the main window we have gin bass 2 and when i click on the contact button contact comes up with our interface and it's that gear icon up in the top right that gives us our articulation information so let's click that now. So this is telling us which note triggers which articulation as well as whether they're momentary or not. And where I'm hovering the mouse right now is MIDI Learn. So you can click that and then hit any key on your MIDI device and that will assign that articulation to that key. This image file that I've just brought up gives a little bit more information as to what each articulation actually means. So watch the top left of the screen. Inspect a window. Track Gin Base 2. Articulation set. New. Now let me just clean up a little bit. In the articulations window, we're going to click channel and select one. Now you can select any channel that you like. I'm naming this main alternating like you can see at the top of our MIDI key map. The channel is one and the symbol in this drop down menu here is for when you're dealing with orchestral articulations which we're not. We're doing bass but they are there if you want them. To enter a second articulation I click the plus icon and then just repeat the steps. For each new channel that you do, we're going to send them all to the same number. Using the power of Grayskull, you could see that I've just finished my Articulations tab and I've moved to the Output tab. And I've pretty much finished here, so let me talk you through it. Name is the articulation name. Type is all note on. Channel is one. Selector is your articulation key and that's it. So let's go back into our main window of logic. 
We've got our gin bass 2 track up and when I open the piano roll, you can now see articulation drop down goodness. So we're in the piano roll, which is where we would pencil in MIDI information anyway. We don't have contact open and you can see these big red lines across the bottom selected. Those are current articulations, so I'm just going to delete those because I don't need them anymore and I'll show you the new way that we will enter our articulations from our articulation sets. Now I'm in my piano roll, I've selected a note as you can see and when I hit my articulation drop down, they all drop down. Now the cool thing that I realized is when you're programming your articulation sets, you can do it in any order that you want and so they will appear in that menu in that order. So if there are some articulations you use more than others, you can keep them near the top. Selected a note, selecting the articulation for it, and that's it. Selecting a whole bunch of notes, articulation for those, we're done. In the inspector window, I've opened up our articulation sets menu, and as you can see, I've just hit save as, which brought up this little dialogue. I'm calling it Gin Base 2, and I've saved it. So in every future session where I'm using this plugin, that articulation set will be available for me. And clearly, that's going to save a lot of time. Here's another quick tip, because there are a few annoying things that aren't intuitively obvious at first. So we're in Gin Base, and if we want to do a slide between two notes, we have to go into our piano roll again. You can see the articulation that we're going to be working with is slide trigger. And you see these notes at the top of the screen. Those notes are G6 on your keyboard, which means that that is going to force the lowest string in this case. If you're not sure, just have a look in your articulations menu. So G6 forces the string and then I select these two notes. And if I apply the slide trigger to them, the note that I start from, the note that I end on, and I've forced the string. And that's how you make slides happen. Not my usual style of video. Sorry about that, but I hope some of you got something out of it. See you in the next one.